Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of What the Smart Book Reviews. Hi, I'm your host Candace. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of What the Smart Book Reviews, aka Candace's personal vlog, because apparently it's what that's what I do. I talk nonsense and um I mean I talk I do talk a lot of nonsense, that's true. But I also do book reviews, right? Like, ish, kinda, right? Okay, anyway, hi. <laughs> Thank you for joining me for another episode. In today's video, we are going to be reviewing a book. And this book is, um, mm, let's just fix these eyebrows real quick. This book is actually a, a little novella that I'm gonna try and like scrape an entire video out of because I got nothing for this week but okay so the book that we're here to review because you've got to stay on track can't if you have to stay on track um is going to be this beauty which uh, you, you may have this book you may have a variation of this book this was a weird one okay and i'm gonna explain why this book contains three novellas okay right this one which is into the dark contains three gina showalter novellas the darkest fire which is like a um, prequel novel to lords of the underworld so technically lords of the underworld book one mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um the amazon's curse which is like an uh i don't know if that's a series by Atlant Atlantis novel, I don't know. Um, and then The Darkest Prison, which is a Lords of the Underworld novel, but like also a novella and also kind of falls somewhere in the middle, right? So if you look up of The Darkest Prison on Amazon right now, it will tell you that that book is Lords of the Underworld book four that is a lie okay don't be fooled um technically and i'm going based off of naomi's official reading list because that bitch does her homework um this is book seven on the list and that's including the first prequel novella so i just i i either when i'm doing orders I try to either go based on something that I've gotten like directly from the author or their website, their official website. I don't trust Amazon. I don't trust any other book. Uh, what other, where, where else do you buy books? Barnes and Noble. I don't trust any of those places. Okay. eBay, like forget it. I trust Naomi and she knows her shit. She's, she gets everything directly from that gorgeous elfin-like creature's mouth. Uh, so I trust her list and I trust Gina's website, which shows that this one is, te is technically like further down the list than Amazon says so. Six minutes later and I've officially explained the same thing five times and just in different ways. Is it what I do? Yes. Um, okay, so. Again, you may have a version of this because The Darkest Prison was also included in a few other books that had other novellas in it. For example, Dark Beginnings, which is a book where you can get as well, like uh, the things like The Darkest Angel, which is Lysander and Bianca's book, which also falls in the Lords of the Underworld series, but also kind of falls in the, in the Angels of the Dark series. So it's kind of... It's like straddling, <laughs> straddling the line. You know what I'm saying? Um, so you could really get The Darkest Prison, which is the book seven minutes in that we're here to review. I'm just now saying, um, which is a novella, as I said. Uh, again, don't trust, I don't trust Amazon because Amazon told me that The Darkest Prison, 
Just the Darkest Prison. I didn't look up this actual book. I looked up Just the Darkest Prison. And it said that um, it was 432 pages long, which is a fucking lie. The, in this book, The Darkest Prison um, starts on page 146 and ends on page 206. So, like, what is that, like 60-something? I can't do math. 146, 206, like 60, 70 pages? So, okay, Amazon, get your shit together. Uh, so, this is what we're here to review. <laughs> and again, I'm going to try and squeeze an entire video out of this because, I mean, I'm already nine minutes in. I haven't said anything about the book. Like, of course I can do it. Of course I can make a 30-minute video out of nothing. Um, you can currently get this story and the story only for your Kindle or Nook for the price of $2.99. You can get this in paperback format. Again, I don't know exactly what format it will come. Will it be, will it be Into the Dark? Will it be Dark Beginning? I, I don't know. Amazon, $9.91. You can find this book used on eBay, it, again, in different compilations for around $5 with free shipping, which is pretty, pretty decent. Um, I bought this one from my local uh, secondhand used bookstore, right? Um, it's not in great shape. The cover, which at one time was like laminated type material, uh, is literally, I can, I can scratch it off. What a mess. Okay. Um, but yeah, so dust literally just flew off my finger. So yeah, that's what we're here to review. So I'm going to read you guys the blurb really quick and then we'll break it down. And this will be a very short one because I've already rambled for 10 minutes and the review itself will probably only take about 10 minutes. So you're, you know, what's up? Like I can't, I can't even, I'm so, oh God, you're such a fucking mess. Okay. So the blurb for this one, the blurb for this one says, Once Atlas, the titan god of strength, was the Greek goddess Nike's slave. Now he is her master, and soon these sworn enemies, who are destined to destroy one another, will be forced to risk everything for a chance at love. Okay, so it's a novella, so the blurb is very short. Understandable. Okay. Um, there's a little bit of backstory that goes with this. So if you are familiar with Gina's Lords of the Underworld series, you will know that it um, revolves around Greek mythology, like a lot. Um, the Lords of the Underworld are a group of immortal warriors who, in a bid for, like, a stupidity, uh, they opened Pandora's box and let out all the demons that were inside. The... Greek gods, who were the gods in control at the time, Zeus, etc., etc., uh, basically said, hey, y'all done fucked up, so what we're going to do is we're going to banish you to Earth, but before we do that, we're going to shove one of these terrible demons inside each of you, and you're going to have to live together with that demon forever because you're immortal, right? So you're just going to live on Earth, and you're going to be miserable, and you're going to be whatever. It's like split permanent split personalities. So that happened. And then fast forward a thousand years, two thousand, I don't know, a lot, a lot of time later. Um, current Lords of the Underworld series, the Greeks have been overthrown by the Titans. The prison where the Titans used to be held, Tartarus, is now housing the Greeks. Prior to uh, the usurping of Zeus and the rest of the Greek gods, uh, one of the Titans, which was um, Atlas, who is the Titan god of strength, was a prisoner in Tartarus. He was uh, tortured-ish by Nike, who is the, his equivalent, the, the Greek equivalent. Of him. She's the, like the goddess of strength. 
for the Greeks, right? Um, so essentially what had happened was Atlas, being uh, the hottie McHotterson that he is, seduced or attempted to seduce a good number of the, um, the Greek guards that were in charge of the prison. They didn't know that he was seducing the others. And Nike, who is one of the ones who gave it up to him, uh, she fell in love with him. And then when she found out that he was stooping all these other bitches, she had like a little meltdown and she basically had his chest branded with her name. Like you're my property, right? Um, so now the Titans have overthrown the Greeks. Uh, Atlas was released from prison and Nike was put in prison. In retribution for uh, the, the chest mangling, um, Atlas decided to have his name put on Nike's back. Okay, so he's like now in charge of the guards of Tartarus. So like he's like head honcho at Tartarus. And there's more Greeks than there are cells to contain them. So they're bunking up with like other Greeks, right? That they've, they're, they're like thrown into cells with each other. Several others, right? Um, so Nike's very obviously being the goddess of strength. She's like very volatile and she's very like um, feisty. And she sees Atlas parading women back and forth in front of the thing. And she's like, oh, I fucking hate you. You broke my heart. Then you branded me. Like granted, I branded you first, but... <sighs> Still, you deserved it because you, you fucked me over. Uh, Atlas is not as um, unaffected as he appears, right? S essentially, he when he was with Nike, it was the best he ever had. And way better than all those other bitches that he was messing with. Uh, and yeah, so he's, he's with other other women, but a lot of it is in like a bid to make Nike jealous. So she decides to pay him back. And when he's walking through the prison one day, she like makes out with her cellmate whom she used to boink. Um, I forget his name. What the fuck is his name? I forget. Anyway, I can't remember. It was another, it was another Greek god. Anyway, so she's making out with him. Atlas gets jealous. He like turns the other girl away and he's like, okay, I'm plucking you from the cell. And I'm going to put you in your own cell because I want you to suffer being alone over here, right? But low-key, I'm doing it because I don't want you to be anywhere near this fool, right? Uh, so he does that. It immediately rouses suspicion, like, with the other guards. Like, where are you going? What are you doing with her? He's like, mind your business. I'm in charge. Um, he goes to Cronus, who is the titan god who's in charge of everything. Uh, he's essentially the type, like, the, he, if you don't know anything about Greek mythology, Cronus is the, the Zeus equivalent on the Titan team. Uh, he's in charge now. He's running things. And Atlas goes to him and says, I want to take Nike from the prison and install her in my home to be like my personal torture device, slave, whatever, right? Um, Cronus is like, no, because... If she breaks free, you have to remove her um, collar thing. They're all wearing like collars that diminish their powers and whatever. And it keeps them from being able to flash outside of the prison, right? So, so um, Cronus is like, no. Because if she manages to break free, even for that minute amount of time that you have her off of her collar to take her from the prison to your home, uh, and she, like, stages a rebellion, it really only takes one Greek to cause a whole ruckus, right? So he turns him down, and he's like, no, you can't. And Atlas is like, all right, fine, cool. He goes back, and throughout the book, there's uh, that tension that between um atlas and nike that like sexual tension and he's like i know you still want me and she's like i don't want you fuck you and he's like 
okay, but you, you really do. And then she's like, yeah, I kind of do. So they have like a couple of little makeout sessions, uh, which just kind of cements his feelings for her to the point where um, he decides to one day take her from the actual prison compound and take her to like a little, like a mile away that's still on the prison ground, so technically not against the rules. Uh, and like let her have a bath and like they have like a little picnic and, and right? And then they do stuff. Um, and yeah, so then he takes her back and he's like, I can't, I'm, 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 I'm falling for her too. Like I gotta, I gotta do something. Uh, he decides to basically like break the ultimate code and release her. She does get away. He in turn gets imprisoned and uh, tortured a little bit by Cronus and whatever. Um, so now he's in jail in Tartars. And Nike goes to his house and sees that like he has a giant portrait of her in in his like it just like hanging there in his in his thing. And she's like, okay. Like he was really mean to her when he set her free because he was like, it was like that cr be cruel to be kind type situation. And she was like, okay, well you're hurting me again. So fuck you, I'm out. And she ditched. And then she went to his house and saw that he had this thing. And then the more she thought about it, the more she was like, okay, he must've done this. He must've been mean to me to get rid of me. So I would go because he knew we only had a certain amount of time. And she decides to stage a prison break of her own. And she busts in and she gets him out. And then they go on the run together. And that's kind of how the book ends. Uh, so again, this is um, like, a, this is a novella. It is very short. I, I honestly, I don't know where this falls in terms of like what it lends to the story arc of the Lords of the Underworld. I don't really know if maybe Atlas and Nike will show up again, like further down the road in the Lords of the Underworld series, or like all of the original Lords have been paired off at this point. Um, there has been a new series that started, that's like a side series, um, which is Rise of the Warlords. Uh, and maybe they'll show up in there. Um, I don't know. There are still a few angels from the Angels of the Dark series that get their own, that need to have their issues resolved. So maybe it might show up. I, I don't, I don't know. Um, but in terms of their individual story, it, maybe it was just written as like, um, like a fun little bloop. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't know if it lends anything to the actual story story arc that's going on. Uh, in the beginning of the novella, I was confused. Because it starts out with uh, Reyes and Danica, which is a Lords of the Underworld book three? Two? Three. Two or three. I can't remember. Uh, Lucian's is one and Reyes is either. But it, it starts out with them. And Danica has a dream. Uh, which as the all-seeing eye. Spoiler alert. Sorry. Uh, she is, has like premonitions. She dreams about uh, stuff that's taking place in heaven and hell. And she she's like a doorway into both. And she paints her dreams. So that they know what the fuck is going on on both sides and with like with the gods and stuff. So she wakes up from a dream and she paints this painting of Atlas basically sc screaming to the sky. He looks like he's in Cronus's throne room and he's like screaming to the sky in either anguish or whatever. And she doesn't know what's happening. And then it kind of flips over to the actual story. And for a second I was like, what am I listening to? Like, y'all had y'all's book. This is a novella, and you're starting with it, and I don't know what's, how these are connected. But, it, I, I guess it's like a tie-in, if that makes sense. Right? 
Um, I'm, I wasn't mad at it. I was just like, what? No, you had your book. <laughs> Move on. <laughs> this is about, this is about two other people. <laughs> anyway, I don't question the show Walter. I just read the show Walter. So, so yeah. So for the rating for this, uh, little cute little novella, I did give it a solid nine. Um, it did line up with like, all of the other books in terms of the general same theme um and uh, I'm obsessed with anything she writes so obviously it's gonna get a high rating and it's gonna get a review because that's what I do so uh yeah so yeah uh 25 minutes later I told you I would do it half an hour if you count the blooper reel <laughs> uh so yeah uh, I really thank you guys so much for watching another video. I don't know why I'm doing this part instead of my follow me on blah, blah, blah part. Instead, and they're going to be whatever. Um, if you enjoyed this video and you think that my personality is not completely off-putting, please consider subscribing. Um, if you do subscribe, make sure you hit the little bell so you get notifications when I upload a new video. Uh, I upload at least once a week and I do little giveaways on my social medias, which you should also follow. I do have a members only Facebook group and Instagram and a Twitter uh, devoted to this channel. So yeah, you should do that. You should follow me, especially on Instagram. I'm, I'm really, I'm really active on Instagram, Twitter. Not so much. I do also have a TikTok, which I have not put up on this thing, but I will at some point. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. I think that's it. Uh, I really thank you guys so much for joining me for another video. I really appreciate it. Um, and I'll be back next week with a fucking monster of a book that I finished and needs to be reviewed. And that would be the third installment of Jennifer L. Armentrout's From Blood and Ash series. So. I usually do that in the bloopers. So that's fine. Um, again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I love you guys so much. And I'll see you in my next video, okay? Bye! Hey, yeah. If we can't find a way out of these problems, maybe we don't need this. Okay, I don't need that. Okay. Okay, hi guys. Um, this is literally the first time that I've parted my hair down the center in 20 years-ish. I feel like it looks weird, um, but you know what? My hair looks like shit all the time, so fuck it. Um, hey. <laughs> hey you, <laughs> I'm sorry, we're here to do a book review and that's what I'm gonna do. Can I just, <sighs> tea. Okay, um, dog hair on my cup, gross. God, why, why? What possessed you? What possessed you to do that? I don't know. My daughter, I don't know, okay. Mm -mm. No, mm -mm. do not like. Okay. Mm. Can I change it? Should I change it? I don't. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to prep anymore. I don't want to do any more work. Okay. Fuck it. You know what? Fuck it. That's all we gotta say. <sighs> I'm hot. I'm hot. It's like really hot in here. Why is it hot? Uh, so I don't really know how long it is because, um, I don't, I don't, what the fuck is this, all this? What is this? What am I, what am I looking at? What is this? Awakening Pandora. What the fuck? Have I read this? 
oh, behind the scenes, excuse me, sorry. Okay, classified files, okay. Where's the actual book? Okay, that was weird. Do half now, do half later, do half now, do half now. I'm very thirsty. 